do as I say, not as I do. Story time. I thought I'd do a slightly different kind of video basically telling the story of the Korean spa skin facial experience that I had in Seoul. This video is a quick overview of the treatments I had done. I'm gonna put before and afters at the end of this video, so keep watching and hear my honest opinions about the treatments. I'll also share the overall cost at the end, so just keep watching. This is a little sneak peek of my before and afters. I was so happy with the effects on my acne scarring, so keep watching to see what I had done in Korea. I went to a medi spa called Pium. That was somewhere in the heart of Seoul at a place called Myeongdong. Generally, there is a big spectrum of getting these types of facial or spa treatments in Korea. You can go on one end of the spectrum and have these really amazing natural holistic spa experiences or you can go completely the other end with a much more clinical experience with uh, injectables and devices and things like that. I went for something that I thought was kind of in between. I didn't want to go for injectables but I did want to know about all of the high-tech devices that they use in Korean medi spas. Now I've never had injectables and it's not something I'm interested in right now but I'm definitely interested in all the devices and seeing what they can do for your skin. Now the main focus for my skin has been acne. I used to have far more cystic inflamed acne that is under control. I've used lots of medications, a good skincare routine for a number of years. I still do have comedonal acne which is those blocked and congested pores with whiteheads and blackheads, but I have far less inflamed acne now. Acne is a chronic condition. It doesn't just suddenly go away. There's no cure. It is about just finding a good balance for your skin uh, until you can control it as best as you can. It's so strange. There is someone upstairs playing Michael Buble Christmas songs. We're still in October. It's like the middle of the day on a Monday. The sun is shining, but we're playing Christmas songs, so sorry if you can hear that. <laughs> Disclaimer, I'm not saying everybody needs to go and get treatments when they're on holiday. This is just something that's really popular in Seoul, and I really wanted to see what it's all about. So the clinic I went to was called Pium. Initially, I felt like it was a really good professional experience. I had contacted them through Instagram and through WhatsApp, and that's how lots of the clinics do it in Korea. I did it on the last day of my holiday, so we had basically traveled from Seoul to a place called Jeju Island and then to Busan and on the last day, way before the flight, we were going back to Seoul. So we took an early train from Busan and we basically made sure we'd get there in time so that I could have this treatment way before the flight. At the time, I wasn't sure if that'd be the best idea because obviously the plane would be quite drying on my skin, but I, I knew that that was the best time to do it because I didn't want it to be irritated during the trip. I figured that I could load up on loads of hydration and moisturizers before the flight and hopefully just get through it. On WhatsApp, you could ask them any questions and kind of figure out what you wanted to book through there. I made it very clear that I didn't know what was best for my skin. I wanted to hear what their opinions were. The whole clinic was really professional and kind of clean looking and that gave me a lot more confidence. It seemed like the whole building was quite new. It seemed like it was quite popular with tourists as well as locals. Now, frustratingly, they were about 40 minutes late um, and that's because they only had one translator. Apparently, sometimes they have two, but this day they only had one. And that meant that that translator was basically in a long queue with the dermatologists or the practitioners. They told me they were dermatologists. I, I don't know if they all were, but the person I spoke to was a doctor and we had the translator there. It was really weird for me being a, more of a patient than a clinician in a situation like this. And it just reminded me of a couple of key lessons in communications about how hard it is for patients and families when you're using a translator or an interpreter because it's so hard to gather information, ask all the questions, and even kind of understand how the clinician is feeling, how confident they're feeling, because you can see their facial expressions, but it's quite hard to know what they're talking about and what they're kind of linking it to. And it's the most frustrating thing when I know that I ask a question and the translator doesn't immediately translate it. It made me feel like they weren't definitely translating the questions I had and I wasn't getting direct answers to what I was a bit unclear about. So from that end, it was okay. It wasn't amazing, um, but they did, I think, try their best. This was obviously a like voluntary thing that I am quite informed about, but obviously if I didn't have any idea or this was like an emergency situation, 
with translators, it is so hard being the patient and I have a lot of empathy for people in that situation. I told them I was looking for help with the congestion on my skin, uh, those blocked whiteheads and blackheads. They basically told me that there was nothing they could do about that because it was very, very stubborn, like milia is how they described it, um, and that there was no real treatments for that, but they could help with my acne scarring and pigmentation. And I had some deeper scarring around my cheeks and pigmentation around my cheeks, as well as more atrophic scarring around my nose Nose, which is those ice pick and deeper scars. They recommended a particular package that had a number of different stages to the treatment. At this point, I there was a lot of letters and names I didn't know. I know a lot about different devices and procedures, but there were still loads I hadn't heard of. At the end, I basically said yes, and I said go ahead, that I just have to trust that practitioner and kind of hope for the best. I wasn't really even 100% sure what I had signed up for at this point. My main concern with all these treatments was making sure they had something that was suitable for skin of color. A lot of the people in Korea don't have skin tones as deep as mine and I was quite nervous that if this clinic hadn't worked with darker skin tones they might not have a predictable outcome. The clinician assured me that the reason she picked this particular package was because it shouldn't cause any troubles with hyperpigmentation in skin of color. I think that to be honest I probably got really lucky but I wouldn't recommend going in with no idea. When they offer you those options taking a bit of time to think about it, doing your own research, a bit of your own googling before you commit. Just because blindly trusting someone is an easy way for something to go wrong especially in a foreign country so definitely be careful and and do as I say, not as I do. So annoyingly, after I decided what I wanted, they basically said that the clinic was shutting for lunch and they wanted me to go away and come back. And obviously we were a bit short for time, so I was a bit worried. They hadn't really started at the time that I had expected and that delayed the whole thing. So if you do go to a clinic like this, make sure you book out almost half a day so you have all of the time and options in case they can't slip you in as quickly. Uh, also, there was plenty of people who kept turning up without appointments, so they weren't booked into the clinic, so you have to message them in advance so that you can get seen on that day. So when I came back, they actually asked me to wash my face to begin the treatment. Uh, it was a bit weird kind of washing my own face. I've been to lots of facials where they kind of massage and cleanse your skin really, really thoroughly, and that's a really enjoyable part of the process. Here, they just ask you to go into this little area where there's loads of different sinks and they have their cleansers there uh, and ask you to wash your own skin. If this wasn't the end of the world, they had a really nice sort of hygienic area with loads of sinks and a few different cleanser options and so I didn't mind washing my own skin but it would have been nice to kind of get the massage when they cleanse your skin. After I washed my face they actually applied a numbing cream onto my skin they probably didn't keep it on long enough, but I think with the time sort of crunch and the kind of delay that we had with waiting so long initially meant they kind of rushed this bit and it did make me really anxious and I'll explain why later on when we get to the bit that actually needed the numbing. Um, but yeah, this is pretty standard, the sort of cling film on your skin and that helps create an occlusive barrier. It helps the local anaesthetic agent work a little bit better. So the first part of this treatment was an aqua peel and this is basically Korea's version of hydrofacial. The practitioners didn't speak great English so I didn't really know what was happening at each stage. I had to kind of guess. They used a really gentle AHA, BHA kind of serum and blend and then they used a hydrating serum with the hydrofacial. That really gentle sort of suction with the hydrating serum just to basically help clean out your pores. Uh, I've had hydrofacials before in the UK. They gave me like an instant glow in the past. They never really gave me like long-term results, especially at resolving the deeper congestion that I have, especially around my chin. In the UK, they can be quite expensive, so I don't really recommend doing them again and again. But here as part of this package, it worked out quite well, so I was like happy to go with it. They also wanted it as part of a sort of a skin prep for the next few stages. So the next thing they went on to is something called gold PTT. That's basically gold photothermal therapy. I'll be honest, this was something I had vaguely heard of before, but had no information on. They very rarely do that procedure in any medi spas around Australia, so I just don't know much about it. I spoke to the clinician and she said this is quite useful for the 
the deep sebaceous glands I had. She said normally people would do at least three sessions of this to get the results that I was looking for. She said I still could get some good results with doing it once. My main concern again was any kind of hyperpigmentation from using these devices and she was 100% confident that this would not cause hyperpigmentation. It ended up being an extra that I paid extra for. I just want to say that this video isn't designed to be like super informative and research heavy compared to my other videos. I just want to tell you the story of kind of what I did and what I went through when I went for my facial in Korea. So initially they use this serum with tiny gold particles and they basically massage that into your skin. They had this device that had a ultrasound massaging probe that gave very, very gentle sort of vibrations, basically spreading that serum around. The serum smelt really weird randomly. I didn't really know what to make of it. None of the other skincare smelt of anything, but that serum just smelt weird. The probe did feel quite nice because it was a bit cooling as well. Now ultrasound has some good evidence for helping induce collagen. That's the supposedly makes the gold particles go deep into the sebaceous glands and it would basically start targeting the sebaceous glands, the bits that are overproducing oil, causing the congestion on my skin. Uh, and it made sense to do that after the hydrofacial or the aqua peel because you've just taken off some of the really superficial blockages uh, and let this gold serum penetrate a bit better. Then they used a laser therapy to actually target the gold particles. So the laser is designed to be at a particular wavelength that only targets the gold particles that have gone inside my sebaceous glands and at that point supposedly to help shrink and destroy the sebaceous glands. Now I was almost a little bit taken aback by the laser. I, for some reason I wasn't expecting that. She didn't really explain to me that there would be a full-on laser like this. I thought it was more going to be uh, like the light probes and the ultrasound um, and the serum itself but there was a laser involved. The clinician just kind of started doing it and it did catch me by surprise and I was a bit nervous about it because there are plenty of incidences where the wrong laser is used on skin of color and it can cause some long-term damage. I was assured that this wasn't the case. Do your research better than I did so that you know what you're expecting. Now this laser wasn't like painful but it did slightly heat up the skin. Lasers that use high heat can cause hyperpigmentation so you have to be careful. At this point it was already happening and I feel like I couldn't really stop it and I had to just trust them. The the laser didn't hurt, I could just feel the heat and I did have some of that numbing cream on which probably helped but without it it probably would have stung and hurt a lot more. Now with the gold PTT therapy they told me that it would be a couple of weeks before I noticed a difference and I can say that since then Touch wood, it's been like two, three weeks. I haven't had any spots, any pimples. I still do have that congestion. I don't think that's changed, but I definitely don't have any more spots. I would be very cautious about going through a procedure that destroys your sebaceous glands again and again. They have a function. They're helping keeping your skin moisturized by producing the natural oils that your skin needs. But I get it, in acne, they are overproducing oils and that's what's causing some of the pimples, but there probably isn't enough research about what happens if you destroy all your sebaceous glands, so just be very, very cautious. So the next part of the treatment I had was called LDM, Local Dynamic Micro Massage. It's basically another type of ultrasound machine that helps alleviate any of the inflammation as well. I think it had a blue LED light probe on it as well, just again to help reduce any inflammation, help target the acne. It felt really nice because it was a bit warming as well. Now this part of the treatment really reminded me of the Lolo Myra device. This is something I have at home that I use to give myself a facial every now and again. And it basically combines a number of different technologies, including ultrasound, including LED, and including radio frequency. This was basically the at-home equivalent of that LDM part of that facial. If you're interested in getting something like this, you can use this again and again at home. Um, I don't know how much that would have cost on its own, but obviously that was something that was only available in Korea, and this is a part of that technology that you can get anywhere. It has a number of different patented technologies in this device, so definitely check it out. I'll make sure there's a link in the description box below as well. Also, with this particular part of the treatment, I felt like I did see some immediate results. My skin looked super glowy and kind of lifted and bouncy straight away afterwards. I'm not sure whether or not that causes any long-term help, which is why I actually prefer like at-home devices because you get to use it again and again. But for now, there was definitely an immediate result that I was quite happy with. The next part of the treatment was a LED device. I've spoken about LEDs a lot. This was a kind of a full stick your head under the LED lights kind of 
machine. They particularly used blue light on my skin because they knew that the acne and inflammation was an issue. And so I was happy about that. And yeah, I sat in that machine for 10, 15 minutes. I'll leave a link to a video where I speak about LED devices in a lot more detail. And, and you can see about all the evidence, whether or not that actually helps you with acne and aging. Then the next part of the procedure is probably the important part, the bit that definitely costs the most in the whole process. And I had something called Potenza radio frequency or Potenza RF. And it's a microneedling radio frequency treatment. I've had microneedling before. I had about six sessions, about five or six years ago before my wedding trying to target my acne scarring i had noticed a very very slight improvement it wasn't like the most amazing thing it did not help me target my active acne which is what i really wanted at that time and i kind of was sold that it would be the one magical thing that would fix everything and that was at a time where i didn't know as much about skincare as i do now now a radio frequency microneedling session is like microneedling on steroids it has this combined technology that makes the microneedling far more powerful the idea is that you have a simple microneedling derma pen type situation that goes to variable depths into your skin and they also release a tiny bit of radio frequency energy that causes a localized reaction and basically like microneedling stimulates your skin to try and heal it that can help you resurface a lot of your concerns and specifically acne scarring the other thing it is majorly used for is for fine lines and wrinkles that usually it depends on the depth at which they go to if they go really deep on these devices and some of them can go up to four millimeters which is not what i had that can actually target some of the fat cells below the skin to go quite deep into the skin into the fat layers underneath the chin and create kind of a more sculpted jaw this is very similar to a morpheus 8 treatment device there are a few different brand names that have very very, very similar technology. I think Morpheus 8 and Potenza are the two big ones. The differences are the equipment that they use, the different types of head, and obviously they're made by different brands. The actual technology is very similar. These types of devices have become very, very popular, but they are actually very expensive. There is some good research. I need to read a bit more. If you're interested in that and want me to talk about it, please leave a comment below so I know, and then we can talk all about the details about radio frequency and microneedling procedure. Now, this particular clinician wasn't happy with me filming and that's absolutely fair enough I would respect that but I did film the device so that you could see what it's like they had reapplied a little bit more of the numbing agent but at this point like it'd been almost an hour or so since the numbing cream and I really didn't think that I had any more kind of numbing effect left on my skin microneedling can really really hurt especially if they're using it with combined technology that creates a bit of heat or something else that makes your skin more painful the practitioner was like no it shouldn't hurt but as soon as they started doing it, it did really hurt. It was like your skin is being stapled and that is the best way to describe it. My eyes were definitely watering. I was trying my best to stay strong, um, but I'm pretty sensitive at the best of times. Unfortunately, the treatment was also kind of interrupted by the interpreter and receptionist staff because they were a bit worried about the time issues that I had. That kind of made the clinician probably panic a little bit and kind of rush, which made me a little bit disappointed because that was the main part of what I'd paid for. The clinician saw that I was kind of struggling with the pain. Normally they do a couple of passes around your skin, but he said that he reduced the strength. I don't know if that meant he reduced the strength of the radio frequency or the depth of the needles. And then after that it hurt a lot less and I could still tolerate it. You can see that this is my skin immediately afterwards. You can kind of see the little dots uh, where the microneedling was. I think I still got a good kind of pass all over my skin. You can see it on this video where I had the redness. After that, they immediately took me to have a cooling mask. It was those cooling like cool like rubber masks where they put it all over your face and you feel like you're a bit mummified but it's also quite bougie and I really liked it and it immediately cooled down my skin it was like putting my face in an ice bath and so immediately it took down the redness I used that for maybe 10-15 minutes and then afterwards I had minimal redness none of these like dots no swelling it literally gone down completely this is what my skin looked like afterwards. I was so impressed that they managed to control that inflammation so quickly. When I also had had like so many different parts of the procedures, at loads of different points could have caused extra inflammation, but they were really, really careful about that. And I think that was the beauty about combining all these treatments is that they each would sort of prep you for the next, but because they were controlling that inflammation and cooling down your skin, you weren't getting side effects. This is not something that is practiced very often in the UK or Australia. I haven't seen any clinics that will back-to-back -back treatments like that. Part of that might be a money thing, 
Part of that might be a being a bit cautious and scared about causing over inflammation. But here they seem really experienced at that. Skin just came away feeling really, really glowy, really, really lifted. And I knew that I'd start to get the effects of the microneedling a bit down the line. But that was a lowdown on the whole like high tech facial that I had in Korea. I really liked it in hindsight. At the time, there were a few stressful moments, but now that I know exactly what to expect, I think I would do it again. It was a fair price for what I got. It was still expensive, I'm not gonna lie. It cost close to 350 pounds. And I had a look at how much these different parts of the procedure would go for. The average like hydrofacial in London can cost anywhere between 50 pounds and 100 pounds. The Potenza radio frequency procedure can cost up to 800 pounds, even more in parts of London as well. So I feel like I got a really good deal getting all of those things back to back for 350 pounds. Ideally, you want to go to a clinic that you can keep going back to. Obviously, I got this done in Seoul, so I won't be going back anytime soon. I would happily get the microneedling and radio frequency again. I noticed that my skin has been looking great since. I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Here are some befores and afters of my skin. I really do feel like my skin got better. I think that my acne scarring felt a lot better. My skin has been feeling like it is glowing and smooth. Um, I have no more active pimples and touch wood. I haven't had any new spots since the treatment. Hopefully the gold PTT worked at controlling that excessive oil production. My skin has just felt really, really smooth until then. I would give it like a full month or six weeks so your skin can kind of go through a couple of skin cycles before you decide whether or not something has definitely worked or not worked. But I was expecting to have a bit of immediate purging, didn't get that. I was expecting to have some skin peeling and dryness, I didn't get that. And I think that's because they went straight in with these cooling procedures and cooling masks. Hats off, that was amazing. And I think I would make sure that if I got microneedling and radio frequency again, I really want to do one of those cooling masks straight away. There are some things that are gonna be there for a long time. The acne scarring is more stubborn. The congestion that I have is more stubborn. I do have hollows around my eyes. Those are the structural parts of my skin that aren't gonna change with any kind of procedure that quickly. Um, but I'm generally quite happy with how my skin is looking right now and I kind of want to keep it that way. It does go through ups and downs, that is normal and it has taken a long time with consistent skincare routines to get to this point. Keep being persistent and consistent, it will eventually pay off and you will eventually get the benefits. It just takes a really long time. The only negative I'd say is that like I really wanted to feel a bit pampered. It was the end of my holiday and it would have been nice to have like a really big like holistic little like couple of hour treatment. It was not like that. There were lots of stressful moments. I don't know if I knew too much. It's what made me a bit anxious. I definitely was not happy that they didn't put enough numbing cream or leave it on for long enough. It would have been good if they maybe reapply it in the middle of the process just so that you are definitely numb before the microneedling. That's something to be aware of. The other thing that was a bit weird about this Medispa was that there was lots of different steps in the treatments and for each step they actually took you into a different room with a different clinician or different practitioner. They were still very professional. I would have loved if each practitioner had just kind of introduced themselves when they came in because I have no idea who they were. I don't know if they were nurses, doctors. That would have been really nice information just for me to feel much calmer and more confident in everything that was going on. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope that was fun. If you enjoyed this type of video, let me know and let me know what you wanna see next on my channel. I'll link here a recent video about collagen supplements that tell you all about the data and information about whether or not to take collagen supplements for your skin. Thanks for watching.